here at Reach Out Reptiles, I'll tell you that if there's one thing we need, it's more cages. We're trying to give the animals the best possible lifestyle, but there's no real system set up for like mass production. By mass production, I mean the few little clutches of dwarf and super dwarf we have every year. Obviously we have a lot of animals, over 600 animals in, in the store right now. And I just, I don't have something I can buy that is a perfect solution to take care of them. So we end up having to build it ourselves. We need more, we need bigger, we need better. You ready? I have some ideas. So as a retic keeper, I've never had a cage I like. Something like four years ago, we made a video on this channel about increasing cage size, getting more of a footprint and multiple levels for the cage. 12 square feet of space, okay? That's 50% increase over eight square feet of space in the same cage. The problem is some of the kind of the industry standard cages are just, they're based around a four by eight foot sheet and max efficiency from materials so that it can be as cheap as possible. Is as cheap as possible really what our snakes need? I don't think so. We've tried later to come up with a different system, including shelves. You guys might remember our Freedom Breeder prototype. My experimental one over here, where they have the height and the perches and everything like that, but it had a tub to pull out on the bottom. Freedom Breeder had made something like this decades ago. And I think where you and I have failed is that we didn't pay for it. So this is some of the other stuff that you guys have been doing, but the big thing for us, for the arboreal racks, we've been yeah. waiting on from a manufacturing process is this new toy over here in the back. But that out of the package solution never came to realization. So we ended up designing and building our own cages. Obviously we have like a wall of these cages built now. And then over here we have some of our older style cages, everything thrown together, a bunch of baby racks. But I love these cages. I love this design. I love how easy they are to clean. Rob loves them, Tim loves them. And so we just need more. If we're gonna get away from the old, we need more of the new. Yeah, we just need monstrous amounts of these cages. Here is literally another 30 more of the cages that we have designed. There is a lot of assembly to do. Once they're assembled, these cages are pretty cool. I like the gallery style, like frames on the windows and everything. They add enough space for the snake to hide behind, just enough for us to see in and really appreciate it. And a lot of opportunities to, to deck these things out. And again, provide that maximum square footage of floor space. But you probably have seen and know what I'm talking about already with these big gaps that we've put between all the stacks of the cages. I mean, seeing a lot of my friends working with like the Stewart Design giant snake playground room. I always thought that was so cool that he could carry some of his snakes and leave them in this giant room to get optimal exercise, but that doesn't really translate to what we're doing here. I need something different. It's just gonna have to come in on our back, and then, and then we're gonna have to roll it this way, because the ceiling's low, right. to get it up, so. Let's do it. We'll probably have to bring her out kind of coffin style. It's relatively sturdy, but these edges can be a little sharp. You got that side, Tim? There we go. And then Tim, lift up on your side, roll it. Roll it. Got it? <laughs> Are we going all the way down here to the end? Yep. Yeah, yeah, you got like barely. a barely. Nope, no, you don't. Yeah, yeah. It just barely creeps. Just like you planned it. Good machining right there. <laughs> All right. You got it, Joe? Yeah, and I got my finger here. Careful. Too high. Yeah, you really can't lift it too much either. A little more. Almost. Yeah, right? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, uh, we're going to want to be careful on my side because there's probes. That's it right there, isn't it? That is freaking awesome. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, cool. I freaking love that. I love that you can see through it. That's pretty cool. See that? <laughs> oh, I, yeah. 
one more thing for uh, old Tim to clean right there. Here you go, Timmy. Hey. Tim's got it. I love it. So, tell you what, let me let me play with them, and then if yeah, you're yeah, then if you're not sick of us, well, we'll make like six more. So we wanted lots of this kind of space, even though we're already giving them lots of layers of this kind of space. So if they have this kind of space and this kind of space, the snakes can finally live in the three dimensions that I think they deserve for the muscle tone and everything else that they need. Interruptions, happy interruptions. The smallest reed ticks that you can find out there are gonna be around six feet. There are six foot enclosures. In fact, we're making some six foot enclosures for ours. So to have a six foot snake in a six foot cage would be really cool, but I, I really wanted to visually show the uh, proportionate difference of what it would take to house a big snake to that extent. And so I was originally going to have a 20 foot cage for our almost 20 foot snake down in this room but I found some even more space for it. I think I'm going to do it in this space instead. Now, the thing that I need, obviously, if I'm gonna make a gigantic enclosure in here, is a gigantic amount of materials. And so, one of the best places that I could think of to find cool, industrial, blue collar style materials to build just a world-class retic enclosure was with a shipping container. This is a big deal. I think it's pretty impressive. And then when Tim just said, that's Karma's cage, I was like, holy cow, it is. That's the biggest cage ever. This guy's like, why are you having this? And he's like, it's going to be a cage for her snake. Not just what? multiple, just one, yeah. No. So much I think you should do a challenge where you have to stay in there with Karma for a certain amount of time, maybe even like two days straight. Brian Bartzik did something. T-West Brian Bartzik. Yes, that's exactly what That's pretty surreal. This thing is something I've been planning, like, that I thought would be cool for years and years and years. So, it's my first shipping container. Hopefully not the last. Pretty cool. Oh, man, I'm getting chills. I got the hair on the back of my neck standing up, just looking at, like, you know, because I have an idea of what I'm going to do to it. Some of it, I'm like, okay, well, how tall is the bottom and the top? Now I can just see it. It's going to be so cool just to be able to run a tape out here and do whatever I need to do with this. So this is obviously going to be a lot to pull off. I'm going to do a lot of it myself, which I think makes an awesome opportunity for a lot of that DIY, you know, kind of creative content that a lot of you guys like. If you think that that's exciting though, we are not going to do that series on this channel because we have too many cool series coming on this channel. You're going to have to go find that on our vlog channel. <laughs> I was like, where's the pull? I can't see it. The vlog channel has all the behind the scenes stuff. It tells you where all the posts are and everything, right, Thomas? Yeah. So you guys are gonna have to go check that out here. And hopefully you guys will enjoy following along as we get those playgrounds for the four footers built, walls and walls of four footers, a new baby room put together, a giant shipping container cage for Karma and the museum and everything else that we have going on.